this, these steps are things that we've now done on two examples. We're uh, writing the polynomial, well, really, we're writing the upside down division sign. We're finding a number or variable that divides evenly into each coefficient and constant. We're dividing by this common factor. And just we keep dividing by other factors until the only, um, only the number that divides into each term is one. Again, this is like that birthday cake idea, right? Where we're just stacking it until we don't see anything else we can pull out or divide out. <clears throat> divide by any variable that each term has in common. Our GCF is what ends up outside of the division sign. So our GCF ends up being here. It's what we've divided by. And then we write parentheses around the terms at the bottom of the division sign, write our answer with the GCF outside the parentheses. So we basically show this in the other form, which is where things look ready to be distributed. So let's try that with two more examples, and then we're going to do some practice. First thing I want you to do here is put the upside down division symbol underneath. And then take a look at the numbers that are there and the variables that are there. What's something you see that we could divide out? I'm hearing two possibilities and they're both correct. I heard an eight and I heard an X squared. Let's go with the eight first, because I think that'll just make the terms easier to rewrite. It doesn't matter what we start with though. 32 X to the fourth divided by eight will give us four X to the fourth. Negative 16 x to the third divided by positive 8 is going to give us negative 2 x to the third plus 8 x squared divided by 8 gives us x squared or 1 x squared. It's up to you if you show the one. Let's see. The next thing we heard is that we can divide an x squared out of every term, and I agree with that. The smallest exponent we have is x to the second power. That means that there's an x squared here and an x squared here. So we're going to divide that out. 4x to the fourth divided by x squared is going to leave us with 4x squared. Negative 2x to the third divided by x squared is going to leave us with negative 2 and 1x left. And then here's the part where people mess up. If I take x squared and divide it by x squared, they don't go away completely. Any denominator and numerator that are the same or equal to, we have to make it visible. So this is going to be equal to 1. These are both things we divided out. So we are going to take them and show them multiplied together in front of the parentheses that has what's left here. This is not as complex as the problem we did just before this, and we have some room here. So I'd like us to do the opposite and go back and check our work. 
we can check our work by multiplying. Eight times four is 32. X squared times X squared is X to the fourth. Is this term the same as what we first started with? Eight X squared times negative two X gives us negative 16 X to the third. Is this term the same as the middle term? And then eight X squared times one gives us eight X squared. So each of these terms, when we multiplied them by what we, after we factored, goes right back to being what this was at the beginning. And that's how we can check and make sure we haven't lost something in the process. Okay, this one looks a little crazy, lots of different variables. But do you see that we can divide out? Okay, I personally like to start with numbers if they're there. We could start with X, but I did hear a two, which is my preferred way, so I'm gonna go there first. Uh, 82 divided by two. And then all of its variables stay the same because we haven't touched those yet. I think I also like to go with the number, the coefficient first, because as I go through and I have to rewrite all these things, I start to see how many X's, how many Y's, how many Z's, and you start to get an idea of what is the GCF of each of those. <coughs> My next term, 16, is gonna be eight, but there's a negative in front, so make sure you're bringing that down. Excuse me. I think I heard Jeremy say we could also divide out an x squared. Do we see an x squared at least in each one of those? So let's divide that out. What's that? Oh, you're noticing something else we can divide. How many y's can we divide out? Okay, let's do y squared. How many Z's can we divide out? Yep.
Okay, so we are left with 2x squared, y squared, z squared as our GCF times the three terms that we have simplified as we divided things out. We divided z squared out, and so they divided out as a full invisible one. It's actually the same thing that happened to this y squared. So to practice, I've given you things even easier than these. This is what the practice page looks like. What's that? It, yeah, I mean, the end problems don't even look as challenging as the ones in our notes. Yes, let's glue this in first, and then we'll get some of these pages passed out to practice. I want this glued to your next blank page, to the right of where we just put our factor trees. So it is going to end up looking like this. Okay. 